Elizabeth leads the way. Elizabeth Cady Stanton and the right to vote. What would you do if someone told you you can't be what you want to be because you are a girl? What would you do if someone told you your vote doesn't count, your voice doesn't matter because you are a girl? Would you ask why? Would you talk back? Would you fight for your rights? Elizabeth did. All of these things used to be true back when Elizabeth Cady was a girl. And all of these things might still be true today if Elizabeth hadn't led the way. She was only four years old the first time she heard someone, a woman, say life was better for boys. The woman had come to visit Elizabeth's new baby sister. What a pity it is that she's a girl. How could anyone look at a little baby and feel sad? What could be wrong with being a girl? She was 13 years old when her father, Judge Katie, told a woman whose husband had died that the farm she had spent her whole life working on would be taken from her. Without a husband, the law stated, nothing belonged to her. Elizabeth was horrified by this unfairness. She said that the law should be cut out of every book. Judge Katie told her that wouldn't change anything. Preposterous! The law was still the law, and only men were allowed to change laws. She decided right then and there that she could do anything any boy could do. She jumped over high hurdles on horseback. She rafted across a raging river. She won a prize for being the best in Greek studies. Her father was proud, but he worried about his strong, spirited, rule-breaking daughter. Ah, you should have been a boy. He knew how much easier her life would be, but Elizabeth wasn't interested in easy. At 16, since colleges would not let girls in, Elizabeth begged her father to send her to a girls' school to continue her learning. So, while most young ladies were getting married, washing dishes, doing laundry, and having babies, Elizabeth was studying religion, math, science, French, and writing. Several years later, Elizabeth Cady met Henry Stanton. He was an abolitionist, speaking out against slavery. He understood how unfair it was for people not to have rights or power. He did not laugh when Elizabeth talked about freedom. He did not laugh when Elizabeth said all people should be able to live life the way they choose. And he did not laugh when she told him she would add his name to her own, but she would not give up hers just to marry him. So Elizabeth Cady became Elizabeth Cady Stanton and had babies, cooked meals, washed dishes, mended clothes, and did laundry. She loved her babies, but she did not love cooking and dishes and mending and laundry. One day, her friend Lucretia Mott invited her to a lunch. Lucretia had always shared Elizabeth's ideas about all the things women could do and would do if only they had the right. The other women at lunch shared them too. Elizabeth got fired up. She proposed they hold a meeting. A meeting that would gather together lots and lots of women from all around to talk. But what would they talk about? There were so many things that needed to be set straight. Married women couldn't own property or even the money they worked to earn. Elizabeth had learned long ago that only men could change the laws because only men could vote. That was it. That was the one thing that could change everything. If women could vote, they could help change all kinds of laws. This idea was so shocking, so huge, so daring, Elizabeth's friends gasped aloud. 
They were flabbergasted. What would the other people think? Elizabeth did not waver. She knew voting was the only way to make a difference. Her battle cry for the right to vote rang out. Have it, we must. Use it, we will. Even her Henry thought she had gone too far. But on July 19, 1848, when Elizabeth arrived at the meeting place, she saw for herself that she hadn't. The small church in Seneca Falls, New York was filled with hundreds of people. Elizabeth read aloud what she and a few of the women had written together. Their Declaration of Rights and Sentiments challenged the idea from the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. When she was finished, she looked into the faces of the crowd and waited. The room was silent. Then a rumbling began. It grew louder and louder and louder as people argued whether or not women should be allowed to vote. Word of the meeting spread like wildfire. Newspapers across the country scolded Elizabeth for her boldness, but other women joined in her battle. The idea of women having the right to vote began to buzz in the ears of people from Maine to California. Elizabeth had tossed a stone in the water, and the ripples grew wider and wider and wider. Many said Elizabeth must be stopped but she was unstoppable. She changed America forever.